Hey guys, it's happening. So, I have another 3D printer to fix. So, I've already figured out what's wrong with it. I so decided I ordered the part for it, but I'll go through the uh, troubleshooting process and how I got to that conclusion. But a really unique problem, and also a very unique printer. Um, well, it's not really unique because it's Creality, but um, this is called a CR10S Pro version 1. And it's the only Creality printer that I've ever seen with a capacitive sensor on it. So the version 2, the version that came out right after this, actually had a BL touch. So this is the only Creality printer I've ever seen that came from the factory with the capacitive. Um, but I actually have, a new, I have I actually have used these for many years. Like my, one of my first printers had one of these. Well, actually my printer bot still actually has a capacitive sensor. Um, they actually work good. I mean they work almost just as good as a BL touch. Probably not as accurate just by a, a small margin, but I mean as long as your offset's correct, that's what, it doesn't really make a difference. I, mean, I don't see a difference. I print with mine on a daily basis, my printer bot. Um, Alright, let me show you the uh, troubleshooting process here. It's a, it's a unique problem. Let me plug it in. So, yeah, this is actually interesting too because it's actually it's an 8 bit board. And they only made this LCD for hardly any time. This is like one of the first color touchscreens they came out with. And this printer is probably 4 or 5 years old. Uh, from like 2017 and um, yeah because I've never seen the same Creality board again or this uh, LCD um, but let me show you this real fast from all accounts this actually works if you're not familiar with the capacitive or inductive sensor you touch them the light comes on right so it looks like it's working good right um, no matter where you put it it works good but let me show you what the problem is here all right, so I just uh, did a leveling all right, so it's going to do a G28 command, which is a hum command. It's going to go both end stops. It's going to hum it, and obviously my heat shroud is not on. Now watch this. And like I said, I already know what the problem is. I already had the replacement part. But it was actually kind of a difficult... Not, I mean, it was... I'll, I'll show you this, the process I had to go through, but it's intermittent. You'll see. All right, that's G28. It's going to go home. Oh, that time it didn't work. So, like I said, it's very intermittent. So I'll bring the ends all back up. Yeah, so I actually brought this down so it wouldn't I keep on ramming the bread. Power it back on. I'm going to upload Proner Face and uh, I'll show you the uh, M119 command. How I troubleshoot this. Well, before I show you what's wrong with this thing, maybe I'll explain to you how these, these capacitive or inductive sensors work. They're kind of similar to a BL Touch, but these actually were out before BL Touch. Um, so you basically have three wires. You have a positive and negative, that provides power, and then you have basically have a return wire. And depending if it's normally open or no normally closed, right, um, you're going to get a different signal back. So this is normally open, you know, because the light is actually off, and when you touch it, it's on. If it was normally closed, the light would be on, and when you touch it, the light would be off. Now, these come in as PNP and NPN. Now, all right, so what happens is when you hit this, when it's activated, it sends back a trigger to the end stop. So it's just like a, just like a regular, even just like a manual end stop. It needs to know, either it's either going to be two different signals, either a ground signal or a 5 volt return. So depending on how you have it configured in Marlin, um, it's either going to be 5 volt, it's expecting 5 volts or ground. Um, which I think in this one it's 5 volts, I can't remember. But yeah, this is actually MPN uh, normally open. Alright, let me show you the uh, proner face here real fast. Alright, so I'm going to do a M119. And that tells me you're open, right? Now, I'm going to have to put something in front of it to trigger it. Yeah, so I put some metal here. So it, a capacitive sensor will actually detect anything in there, it doesn't matter what the surface is. An inductive sensor only triggers on metal. So this is actually capacitive. It actually can uh, detect either any sort of material, glass or whatever. Um, so let's do the M119 command. M119, extra character. M119, open, 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 right? So that should be triggered because this thing is triggered. M119 should show triggers. So let me move it over here. 
going to do another M119. Triggered. Right? Before it was open, and now it's triggered. And all I did was moved it. Okay, M119 again. Open, open, open. Even though it's triggered. Now watch this again. M119. Triggered. So, I don't know if you guys know, or at least what you, you can tell what's wrong with this thing. But it's an intermittent wire. So the, the X wire that goes, or not the, the end stop wire that goes back is intermittent. So this must be frayed or broken somewhere inside this wire. Because what I can do is, I've already been troubleshooting this for a while, um, is if I mess with the wires, right? Um, if I hold the wires and get them in the right spot, I can trigger it again. So that basically tells me it's a broken wire. Let's see if I can do M19 again. See if it comes back up. M19. Open, open, open. So I'm not going to hold the camera and do the wires at the same time. But I've already troubleshooted it. Yeah, so if you're having a, a similar issue, um, you think it works good because you're getting this feedback light, right? But the signal, end stop signal, is not getting back to the main board. So, um, yeah, you just got to move it around, do M119 commands. Yeah, because what originally what happened was it would go down at home fine, right? Because it was in a spot where the wire worked. So it would go down, home the connection, then it would come back over here and start doing a G29 bed leveling, and then it would start ramming it into the bed. So I was like, what the hell is going on here? You know, and because it looked like it worked. But, all right, frayed wire. Seen it all. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to sometimes go into too much detail, but um, I only actually show a, a, a small fraction of the printers I actually fix. I mean, I fix a lot of printers, so. Um, I, I usually like film different stuff, unique stuff. No, I don't usually do like end stop stuff, but this is a little bit different. So, so right now I have the nozzle on the bed, it's touching the bed, and so this actually was what creates the offset. So the difference between where this probe detects the bed and, and the nozzle, that's the offset, like a negative 1.6 or negative one. You have to take the take the measurement away. You have to take the difference away. Okay, so I'm gonna go like about right there. Also, at the same time, you don't want this thing to hit parts. Or like if you get like a like a like a scrap on that bed, you know, you want to create issues. So you don't want it to be so close, but you want it to be able to trigger. Be reliable. That's probably good, about a millimeter off the bed. That's probably about 1.5 offset, probably. All right, so let's do a, another hum here on this thing. Leveling. All right. So this should do, first do a G28 hum. I haven't put this back on yet because I want to make sure it works. Or I, I don't have to make any adjustments here. Okay, G28 works now. Comes back, does a sort of thing. Okay. One thing I don't know, I'm trying to figure out, is this thing will give you baby stepping or, or be able to do the Z offset, Z offset in real time. Just because I know this thing doesn't interface directly with Marlin, it acts more like a mini computer. Um, maybe the option will change. Um, yeah, because I need to be able to bring it down and set the Z offset. I mean, I can do it in, in my slicer settings, but then I have to go back and do it a gazillion times. So I can't, I mean, it's, it's nice with the newer versions, I can see, you know, in real time, like, what the offset is. I can adjust it and bring it down. Alright, so there was another auto winning feature. Just going to do probe the bed everywhere. I mean, this is in real in real Marlin. This is called a G29 command. All right. So got the cube on there, the SD card. I'm trying to emulate what the guy would do, not what I would do, because the way I do things are it's differently. I do all my slicing and I do all, I do my offset in G code in the slicer, whereas most likely this guy is not going to do that. The M851 command. So I'm trying to emulate what this guy is going to do. There is actually a Z access compensation, but I don't know. It's it's very proprietary to that screen. Uh, I'm gonna adjust that. Way too good. Right, so I told it to do 40 skirt lines. That way, it could actually dial in the uh, Z offset. So it looks like it's negative 0.7 is the sweet spot. 
because you want it to be flat and you want the lines to be touching each other. This is one of the reasons why I do test print, is just to make sure everything works because it sucks for this guy to get back to his house and not be able to print, even though I fixed the original problem, but you know, there's more than one problem with this thing. Loose, loose nozzle, it's jam. Um, I'm also just trying to figure out the, the things in here. Uh, the limited control panel. All right, so if you're not familiar with getting rid of jams, I actually heat this up to ABS. You, sometimes you want to superheat it, and then uh, if you can't get rid of the jam, well, sometimes because what happens is you, if you block the fan, the main fan, you'll allow heat creep to come up into the the heat break, and so a lot of times the jam is actually in the heat break between the PTFE tube and the heat break. So I do um, actually have some kind of random jam. So I just stuck a little drill bit in there to stop the fan. So that allows the heat to come up into the actual hot end. I'm not trying to feed this thing. Get rid of that thing. Whatever's in there, stuck in there. Yeah, look how bad that jam is right there. It's a combination of melted PTFE tube, filament in there, man. I don't even know if I can get that out. Um, I might just have to hit a blowtorch to just to break up the plastic because I can't even. I drill. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that thing. I just have to get a new block. Not the heater block, but just the heat break. I guess this is pretty common with Creality's. If you guys don't know, this PTFE tube has to go all the way down to the very bottom of this block. So if you're not all the way to the very bottom, you're going to get a jam right there. You'll get, you'll, in between here, the, the filament will melt in there. And the problem is, it's, it's the, the, the hot end is down here and it's sort of warm. It just turns into this, you know, slightly melted plastic and it stops the whole flow. It's funny, this video started out as a capacitive sensor repair. And this crazy jam, so I got good even flow again. All right, all right, next step test print. All right, there we go, finally making progress. Yeah, that was a horrible jam. I haven't seen a jam like that in a while. So, parts of the PTFE tube were way stuck down on the nozzle. So, I had to take the nozzle out, put it over a torch, you know, dig all the stuff out because PTFE tube doesn't melt at the same temperature as, as the other stuff, right? So it just gets stuck in there and it doesn't melt. So if it's way, it was way down the nozzle, it's a uh, tons of little scraps in there. So yeah, this would have been frustrating this guy would have taken this home and tried to print with it, you know, and that's why I do uh, all the test prints. But if you're in the Orange County area and you uh, want to look at your 3D printer, links are down below, oc3dtech.com. All right, cool.